So hey class, who all wants to learn what goes on inside the crane? again hey in this video we're going to talk about what some of this stuff in this cab does um, I've already talked about what the joysticks do in one of our other other videos uh, today I'm going to talk about what the screens show and the information on those screens and a little bit on how I use it so, uh, we'll start with this screen on the top left here this this is the outrigger screen it also has a few other uh, pieces of information on it. Fuel gauge, We've got a tachometer, shows what our engine speed is. Um, gauge, level gauge for our DEF system or urea. Uh, this little indicator shows that our house lock is pinned. And the, the part, the upper part on the crane that actually turns, they, they call that the house or superstructure. So you, you may hear me refer to that in the future as a house lock or superstructure lock. It's actually a steel pin down here on the floor that you drop through the rotating structure on the top and it physically pins into the carrier down below so that the superstructure can't be turned from an outside force. Um, on the top left side of the screen we got our water temperature, our coolant temperature. Down here on the bottom left the indicator shows that our axles on the carrier in the up, are locked in the upright position. This particular crane will not operate unless the axles are raised and locked. Um, in the center of the screen, this is a, like a like a bubble level or a target um, that shows how level we are. Below that is a little indicator with some numbers on it. Those numbers uh, delineate the degrees of how level we are, left to right, front to back. There's also a little graphic here. Um, Try to zoom in on it, get the camera up close. And what that is, it, it's kind of a generic picture of the carrier. So the line shows that the carrier cab is on this end. And we have arrows pointing to the front, back, arrows pointing side to side, and that's how I can tell which direction we're out of level with these numbers. Below that is another picture of the carrier with some numbers around it. And this little line again denotes that that's the front of the carrier with the cab. My outriggers and those numbers are the amount of weight in standard tons that's on each outrigger. How I use that information, and not a lot of cranes have that, but how I use that information is, uh, for instance, if I'm making a max pick over one side, or if I'm reaching way out over one corner, I can glance at those numbers and tell if I'm getting light. And by getting light, I mean if I have, if I'm boomed down over that corner of the crane, the outrigger that is directly opposite of it is going to have less weight on it. Well, as I increase the load or increase how far I'm reaching, um, that outrigger is going to have even less weight on it. So there does there does come a time when you will actually start picking that outrigger up off the ground. And yes, it, it does happen even when you're still in your load chart, especially if you're over a corner. So I have made a few picks to where I was over a particular corner, glance over my outrigger screen, and the outrigger directly opposite of the one that I was over had zero weight on it. So it is a pretty good tool to be able to keep an eye on what you're actually doing with the crane and where you're at in relationship to the stability of the crane. If you get one of these things unstable, stuff happens pretty quickly and, and there's no recovering from it. So um, that, that's pretty pertinent information. I wish every crane had it. Now we go over to this screen. There's a few different graphics on it with some buttons below it. I'm not going to get into all the buttons. There's, there's buttons in this cab like almost in the cockpit of an airplane. I'll cover what a few of them do, but I'm not going to cover all of them. Okay, so this graphic here, it shows my outrigger configuration, and it shows right now that they're all fully extended, which they are. And then also, this circular graph around it, at the very bottom there's a dot. Um, 
as I rotate, that dot will move around that circle, and I can glance down and and tell exactly where I'm at on, over the, what part of the carrier. I'm not exactly sure why that's pertinent because, well, I can glance outside. You can see we got a lot of ice on the deck, but I can glance outside and where I can see where I'm at over the carrier. Uh, at the top of the screen, we've got our anemometer or wind speed. Right now it's reading zero. And then we go on to the next graphic, and that one shows uh, kind of a silhouette of the crane. This number is the boom length. Counterweight configuration, right now we've got 79,000 pounds of counterweight on the back. Our boom angle, right now we're boomed down to 34 degrees. The radius, and you guys will hear me talk about radius in, in my videos quite a bit. Um, what that is, is the distance from the center of rotation of the crane to where the hook is hanging down. So if we drew a line from right here to roughly right here, that would be our radius. So right now our radius is 29.5 feet. Um, this number over here shows what our total max capacity is with the current boom or current crane configuration with our boom angle, boom length, counterweights, outrigger span, etc., parts of line. And then this number here, which isn't reading accurately at the moment because I've still got the boom completely retracted and I haven't done anything with it yet. And that shows the actual weight that is being exerted on the crane. So I'll scroll over to this screen. I'm, I know I'm kind of rushing through this. I, I don't want to make this a 20 minute long video. Uh, I'm trying to get some information pumped into you guys pretty quickly. This is our clarion screen. It's called that because, well, it was made by clarion. This is a multifunction display that we use for selecting our boom lengths. So I'll scroll through all the different boom lengths that we can use, boom configurations. Um, this isn't all of them. There's even a few we can add once we put the jib on it. And I'll go over the jib in just a second. This is where I choose what boom configuration and boom length that I want. If I back out of that, this is also where I go to look at my winches with the winch cameras. And right now you can't see anything because they're covered in ice. Um, also what this screen does is I can go in, I can adjust my function speeds. So this is swing speed, boom up and down, cable up and down on winch number one, cable up and down on winch number two, and jib up and down with the hydraulic luffing jib. Um, also on this screen is our maintenance menu. And I am not even getting into the maintenance menu. That menu, if you inadvertently get into that maintenance menu on this crane and you start pushing buttons and you don't know what you're doing, you can actually do a lot of damage to this crane. So I typically don't get into that unless I'm on the phone with someone from Tadano and they are describing to me what they want done because there's either a malfunction with the crane or we need to see what's going on with a particular aspect of the crane. Okay, we'll scroll over to some of our buttons. Um, we talked about this switch in a different video that uh, is what selects my second winch operation. This switch here is how I control the hydraulic luffing jib. If I flip this switch, then the controls on the right joystick switch from boom up and down to luffing the jib up and down. Uh, I'll show you the jib on, hanging on the side of the crane see part of it there it's it's in the stowed position that's uh, transport position and what that is is that's an extension that we can put on the end of the boom to give us more reach or if we need to say go up and over and reach into the middle of a building we can put the jib on the end and left it down and what I mean by left it down is is just that it pins on the end of the boom and then we can actually break it over where I guess for lack of better terms it looks like an L shape um, and that, that's what luffing is if I left it down it turns into more of an L if I left it up it goes back to straight 
we also have some inserts back at our shop that we can put between the jib and the end of the boom. So we can we can put 123 feet of jib on this thing in total jib length, and then it's got 197 foot of main boom, um, which gets it up there actually pretty high. It's about like handling a fishing rod. So I, I know I covered all of that pretty fast. I wanted to kind of dive in to that while I had some downtime. That way you guys could uh, see what I see every day. Uh, and, and some of the information that I get and what I use it with.